Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second Women in Films Forum at the CSW. I'm Zoe Chang, president of the UN uh, SRC Multimedia Guild. We are pleased to partner with the Wheeling Media Group in organizing this forum. We thank Ms. Ira Houston, um, the Wheeling Principal Officer, for her uh, presence today out of her busy schedule. Our next speaker, Tracy Birdsall. She's an award-winning producer and actress based in Hollywood. She's known for her meticulous preparation and diverse and challenging roles. Tracy has produced four featured films and is the producer and star of Rogue Warrior, Robot Fighter. <laughs> Tracy. Hello. Thank you so much, Zoe, for having me, and Ira for having me, and I love all of these inspiring stories. I, I feel like like I come from a little bit of a different perspective. Um, when I was born as a little girl, I was the youngest of three, and I knew that I was a girl, but I felt like I was a human. I didn't have a divisive understanding of gender or race or anything like that. And you can attest that I'm sure to my parents, but at the same time, I was such a tomboy. You know, on the inside, I was very much like the boys, and I hung out with the boys, and I played football, and they didn't have a girls' soccer team, so I played on the boys' soccer team, but I had to fight really hard to get on it. And, and at the same time, my, my nickname was Rain. I was really, really emotional. So I was like, I just felt like a human being. I didn't feel like I was a boy or a girl. I was a girl on the outside, but on the inside, I was a human. And so the one thing that I love doing is studying other people. And I think that's what led to my love of performing, is I'm that person where if I look at you, it might start to bother you after a while. Because I watch how people move their faces and how they move and, and who they are and how they feel, and I absorb it. And then I turn around and I use it in my characters. And one of the things in the press that I love that people say about me is they say from project to project, they're like, oh my god, you didn't even seem like the same person. But that's by choice. It's because I like living the lives of other people and bringing them to life. Um, it's a bit of a, a problem, though, as an actress when you don't really identify with that female role. And so when I did get auditions for those roles, I quite often didn't get them. And they just said, well, I just don't see you as the mom type. And yes, I was a single mom. And I love my little accidents. But, so I already had a rough life, you know, I was already working as hard as I could, but I knew from my father that the one thing that I could do that would set me apart from all the other people that looked just like me in town that were very girly was skill. And so I studied, and I'm a ridiculous studier, and I studied Stanislavski, and I studied Meisner, and I studied all these things, and what happened, which is very interesting, is I lost that, that identity that, that human that was inside of me. You know, then I was an actor, and I loved being an actor. But then I met somebody, and she's, she's still my coach to this day, Margie Haber. And Margie brought me aside, and she says, you've got to find your child self. She says, you're brilliant. You have all the skills, but you have to find that child self. And I said, well, everybody doesn't approve of that child self. My child self is different than everybody else's because I don't identify with this divisiveness. You know, and she says, no, just go with it and bring that inner child self to everything that you do. So I'd already, I was already, you know, brilliant at putting on other people, right down to the little tiny facial muscles. I mean, it's just I'm really, really into it. And I spend way too much time on it. But as soon as I found that inner self, I couldn't find those projects that were perfect for me. Because I like to run faster and climb higher mountains, and I like guns, and I like fighting, and I like, you know, you're talking about the war films and stuff like that, and, and I like the action stuff. And um, so I'd already produced films in the past, but I met Neil Johnson, and he's very into the female empowerment. And so for me, the roles that I've been playing, 
they aren't really that they're a female lead action hero. They're a human being. You know, so for me, it's like I'd like to be called on those roles where it's not a man and it's not a woman. It's a human being, you know, and then let let whoever gets cast, whoever's the best at that, whoever you love the most, let that person take on the characteristics. And so I, I, I come to this as, you know, somebody who's worked way too hard in my life to get to where I'm at. But I did it by not identifying myself as a boy or a girl. I did it as, I know I'm a woman, but I'm a human being. And to me, that's the most important thing. And it brings me back, I loved what Lori was saying, because she says if we could all just look at it as, you know, that we are what we are and not look at it as a female director or a male director. And that's how I choose to look at life. I'm, not, I'm no longer naive. I'm no longer young. You know, I'm not that little girl that's like, oh, I don't know, you know. But at the same time, it's like I refuse to give in to the fact that I should say, oh, I'm just an actress. No, I'm an actor, and I work harder than anybody that I know, and I don't feel that I need to play the woman role. And, um, and so I feel like I'm making my impact in the world by being that, that strong person. And imagine all those other little girls that feel like you know they have to choose who they are. You don't have to choose who you are. You can be that girl that hangs out with the boys and you can show that strength, and that's okay. And I wish I would have had that example when I was a little girl, you know, because Wonder Woman didn't dress like I did. <laughs> was like, and, you know, and, and so again, to me, that was a woman being strong. But to me, I mean, my favorite thing about the last film that I did with, with Neil was that um, it's, it's called Age of Darkness, and that I didn't wear any makeup in the entire movie. I absolutely loved it. I just wore dirt. And so I didn't have to be beautiful. I didn't have to be all those things that people expect for you to be. I could just be strong, and I could run faster and carry bigger guns. And, and um, to me, that's a beautiful thing, is just to be a human being. So if I have anything to bring to this panel, it's that I do think that we're all just human beings, and I do think that everybody ought to be able to live their lives and do the most that they can and not have to be identified by whether they're man or woman, but just who's best at their job. Let's stop looking at people by what they look like on the outside. Let's stop dividing people, because I was born into a non-divisive world. So thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy. Well said, and so beautiful. Tracy, I was very moved by your expression of a discriminatory understanding. There are terms which sometimes seem opposite to each other, and yet you brought it home, because if we understand the other as the other and not ourselves, we are at once choosing to, under, to discriminate, and we are choosing to place that other in the context of someone we are not, and possibly, in a sense, someone who is inferior to us. Thank you for your generosity, thank you for your creativity, and above all, Thank you for your faith in the United Nations. <laughs>